Go over to the car. Go over to the car. Am I in trouble? You're going to get a citation. Go over to the car. what? A citation he's going to give me. An officer whose actions were questioned after a recent domestic violence call has resigned. And all that stuff you do on Chris, where I, kept, I told you to sit down, you got up, and you started to go this way. You can't do that. Brent Woodard resigned last night from Mountain Air Police Department. All right, folks, this is what you like to see, accountability and transparency. We have an update video of a no-good cop who is no longer working for the Mountain Air Police Department. When we first heard of this officer, he was pointing tasers at innocent people and charging them with frivolous crimes that were never committed. Now, why was he allowed to resign instead of being fired on the spot is beyond our understanding. It's time we overstand what's happening here. When police get caught up, and get in trouble, many times they're allowed to resign in order for their families to not suffer the consequences. But should the officer be allowed to resign for that specific reason? Let me read to you what Small Town Audit 48 put up as an update, then we'll get into this better than nothing follow-up video. Apparently some people in our town, including our mayor, are saying I'm posting these videos to start drama or become YouTube famous. There's only one reason I started this, and it was to show how these cops were coming at my family and how citizens get treated by this tyrant cop that is totally unhinged and was possibly going to hurt or kill someone. The truth is, our mayor could have fixed the problem long ago. Instead, he said he can't just fire an officer without seeing it himself. While many vids later, and he still didn't fire him. But at least Woodard will no longer be harassing people of Mountain Air because he has resigned as of yesterday. I was almost ready to put it up and say goodbye to all my wonderful subs and watch videos instead of post them. But I guess after the mayor talking behind my back, I'll be doing this a little bit longer. So now we FOIA videos, phones, emails, town cameras, documents, and more on why Woodard and the chief were only getting worse and never getting disciplined for their actions. And then he goes on to thank me, Accountability for All, and Cap Cop Watch, and especially James Freeman. And I definitely want to give a shout out to James Freeman for going out of his way to help this channel as well. You guys, I'm going to drop the link for Small Town Audit 48 in the description of the video and also in the pinned comment. Make sure you guys go subscribe. Let him know we have his back and let the public officials know from his town that we the people are watching. All right, guys, check out this video. Mountain Air, New Mexico demands action against mayor and chief of police. Officer Brent Woodard shows up to a call regarding a domestic violence. The call was already being handled calmly by a fellow officer when Woodard takes over the interaction. From here, no formal request for entry or warrant was shown or issued to the couple by Woodard. After denying Woodard entry into her home, the woman begins to shout for her boyfriend. Woodard then grabs her by the arm, ripping the woman's shirt, and pushes into her home. The woman in question is well aware of her rights and continues to shout at Woodard that his actions are illegal. When Mr. Chris Medina, her boyfriend, asks about the incident requesting why she was shoved and her shirt was ripped, Woodard proceeds for an hour to convince him that none of the incident took place and Mr. Medina should not request the body cam footage. Woodard's reasoning for advising Mr. Medina against requesting the footage was, as he stated, not Mr. Medina's responsibility to see if the police are doing anything wrong. This statement alone touches the very foundation in which police accountability exists. The couple had called regarding a man arguing with a woman brandishing a shovel. They were met not with aid from responding officers, but rather interrogation, assault, and a blatant violation of their rights. This is merely one of the many documented incidents against Officer Woodard. Woodard was previously recorded threatening a man with a taser for merely attempting a conversation with the officer. Rather than facing any type of disciplinary action, Woodard was then promoted to sergeant. This promotion was granted on behalf of Police Chief Juan Reyes. This goes further than your average police chief defending one of their own. Video footage documents multiple town hall meetings where citizens voiced their safety and concern regarding Woodard's behavior to Mountaineer Mayor Peter Nieto and city councilors. One of the voiced incidents involves a local EMS with allegations of sexual harassment. Although Woodard has since been relieved of his position on the force, it is incidents such as these that shed light on a much larger issue for Mountaineer citizens. Citizens are actively advocating for the removal of Mountaineer Police Chief Juan Reyes. Despite multiple town hall meetings with Mayor Nieto, the evidence and testimonies failed to bring about change. City councilors Ernie Lopez and Robert Torres, alongside private investigator Carlos McMahon, recently investigated Chief Reyes only to find evidence that Reyes lied on the application process to pass a background check. After conducting a formal background check, it was revealed Chief Reyes pled no contest to a fourth-degree felony for aggravated battery against a family member. 
Court documents on the investigation state Reyes hit and threatened his pregnant wife with a knife. Reyes was given a probation for the incidents and has since made a public statement to defend himself, stating, I never had a problem because this thing was dismissed. The court records show the probation was ended early, but the case was not dismissed. There are questions as to whether the evidence provided will finally be enough for Mayor Nieto to take action. City Councilors Lopez and Torres opt for a vote regarding the matter. Despite the pile of evidence and testimonies, Mayor Nieto has stated to local news sources that he is not looking to remove Reyes. Next council meeting is set for June 2022. While there have been issues with Officer Woodard, his law enforcement certification is still intact. The LEA says he has one formal misconduct complaint for allegations Woodard asked another officer to alter a police report. That complaint was eventually dismissed, which means Woodard could still be an officer in New Mexico. Back to you. Okay, thanks, Gabe. Now, the mayor of Mountaineer told us yesterday that both of the incidents in Mountaineer with Woodard were under review when he resigned last night. So I'm going to ask you, because I'm upset about this. Um, it's okay. So he is the victim of the crime. He comes down and she is screaming at me that I can't do what I'm doing. Um, and of course, I can do all the things that I'm doing. And so she's, um, she's the suspect in the, in the domestic and she's hindering me at my investigation. Then I give her commands not to call anybody and not to use her phone. And she doesn't listen to that and uses her phone and calls for more people to come to the scene, which makes it... Um, Would you arrest? Just yeah. without all the other shit that's happening, would you arrest oh, her? The DV? No, without all the oh. fucking shit that the people do to us. I'd arrest. Right. So would I. So but in this climate, with all the people that are doing this stuff to us and interfering with police actions, um, so I was going to write him. Um, a non-traffic citation for interference and write her a non-traffic citation for interference but um, if I'm going to do that I should be taking her to jail Is there a child in the house? No, her child is Isaiah Camacho's baby and Isaiah Camacho's child lives down there at 509 okay. Hanlon Fuck this, I'm just right alert. Well, we got it here. He said, she said, we yeah. don't have wounds on either of yeah. them. And then we'll just go interview her and then look at the camera. And then we can write a criminal complaint later if, if I yeah. calm down. Okay, let's go to the house. Rhonda, come with me for a moment. Just a second, Chris. Let's roll up our windows, though. All right, guys, I want to say outstanding work by Small Town Audit 48. You guys definitely got to go subscribe and show him that support that you guys have given me throughout the years. Also, huge shout out to James Freeman. Thank you for doing everything that you're doing. All the support that you're giving this channel as well. Outstanding work, bro. Also, shout out to Direct D, who definitely brought this to my attention. Because of the tremendous work done by Small Town Audit 48 and James Freeman and the private investigator, that chief of police is on his way out. He's a damn liar who doesn't deserve to be in that position. Great work done by the people. I believe the mayor should be on his way out as well. Shows how much corruption boils, not just in the big cities, but in the small towns as well, folks. Watch the rest of the video, which is the news clip from the bombshell press conference. James Freeman was there covering it. You guys go to James Freeman's channel and watch the videos regarding this incident. And also make sure you watch all the videos on Small Town Audit 48. They're on his channel, uncut. Definitely don't miss this story. Stay updated. All right, folks, here's the rest of the video. There is definitely a storm brewing in our state tonight, but rain and thunder has been replaced with accusations, intense fighting, and uncertainty regarding leadership in a small town. And that's just some of it. Griffin Rushton was in Mountain Air for that uh, showdown today, Griffin. I mean, this is all centered around the town's police chief. 
Tessa, a private investigator and two city councilors want that chief removed from his position. They were planning to outline their evidence during a news conference this afternoon, but that's not a move some in Mountaineer support, and they made it clear today. One man drove his truck right to the curb and revved his engine while the investigator tried to speak. Eventually, we learned why people want the chief out of a job, and we heard from the chief himself. This person at no point should be having a gun. Federal law says that if you're convicted like this, you don't have a gun. Carlos McMahon is a retired private investigator who recently looked into Mountaineer's police chief, Juan Reyes. This is why Reyes's job application for the Mountaineer police chief position filled out in 2018. On it, Reyes claims he's never been convicted of a misdemeanor or felony although court records prove otherwise. Was he ever charged of a crime, a misdemeanor, a felony? He checks no, but as you guys can see, this man, this man has committed crimes in the past. McMahon's paperwork and online court records show Reyes pleaded no contest to serious charges in 2000, including a fourth degree felony for aggravated battery against a family member. Investigators say he hit his pregnant wife and pulled a knife on her. A judge gave him probation. He lied on all the other applications as well that he said that he's never been convicted of a crime or a felony. Had he said that, guess what? He would have not got that job. McMahon believes those charges stayed under the radar during background checks because the chief was processed as Juan de Reyes, but used the last name Reyes on his job application. He showed up at Friday's news conference to defend himself. I've gone through many, many backgrounds, and I never had a problem because this thing was dismissed and it was done. Court records show his probation ended early, but the charges were never dismissed. Chief Reyes now says he's going to sue McMahon for slander. Let me tell you, if, if the state of New Mexico or anybody would have wanted to pursue this, they had their opportunity. They didn't because there was nothing. Mountaineer City Councilors Ernie Lopez and Richard Torres want Reyes removed from the position based on McMahon's evidence. Lopez is pushing the City Council to vote on it. I just have concerns of having, um, you know, qualified, you know, reliable, safe people in town protecting our town. Meanwhile, Mountaineer Mayor Pete Nieto contacted us after the heated meeting. He says he is not looking to remove Chief Reyes. However, some of the people both men serve say they should both lose their positions. The mayor is covering for the chief. The mayor is just as crooked as the chief, in my own opinion. I'm not scared to say it. The town is now at the point where they are starting to stand up to the chief and to the mayor. They want action. Now, there are questions about whether Reyes could have this position since he's a convicted felon. Mm -hmm. State statute shows he can have a law enforcement certification because his conviction happened eight years before he got the chief job. But people still believe there should be consequences for apparently lying on his application. Next city council meeting is in June, and we'll follow up to see if this issue is on the agenda.